Today is Tuesday, April 26th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services, Archer Financial Services, or ADM. Today's guests are Steve Freed, ADM Vice President of Grain Research, and Dennis Smith, Archer Financial Services Senior Broker and Livestock Analyst. Starting with our guest today, Dennis, there was a cattle feed on report a cattle on feed report issued on Friday. What were the results of that report? Yeah, that report, Kurt, surprised the market with larger than expected placements. The trade had been expecting placements down as much as 8% compared to March of a year ago. Instead, the report indicated placements at 100% of a year ago. Uh, the bearish surprise rocked the board hard yesterday. June, August cattle 300 lower in yesterday's activity. So now you have those contracts that are trading at a sharp discount to the cash steer market. Cash, cash steer prices uh, steady, maybe slightly lower with some early Monday trade in the 140 to 141 area. Now, the marketing rate was 98% of a year ago, but I think the key, the real focus is that in fact, we marketed more cattle than what we placed, and that's the important thing. As long as we continue doing that, the industry is moving toward a current marketing status. But nevertheless, the market took a hard yesterday, 300 lower, versus a little bit higher trade in the early action today. Dennis, looking a little more long term, where do you think futures prices are heading? Kurt, long term, we've got a situation in which we are we are depleting beef cows. We've been culling beef cows for over two years. And instead of seeing this cull in the cows slowing, it's actually accelerating. And there's a lot of factors involved. In, and the, probably the most prevalent is uh, the, the loss of equity with, with uh, cattle producers losing money uh, fairly consistently for more than two years, basically since that Tyson fire in the uh, Finney County, uh, Kansas plant, but also the drought, the extreme drought situation, especially in the Western Great Plains, all the way from Texas up through Montana, it's created a, a, a situation in which there's not enough grass and hay prices are too high, and we continue to see the beef cow herd liquidated. Long-term, Kurt, uh, looking for a peak in, in beef production, and uh, say a year from now, year and a half, two years from now, sharply lower beef production in tandem, which probably will be continued strong demand for beef, resulting in sharply higher prices. Well, finally, Dennis, is the Chinese clampdown on COVID impacting lean hog futures? Well, it certainly seems to be the case. I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, from a global uh, economic growth standpoint, you can understand the concern as, as they are shutting down and disrupting a lot of factories and, of course, a lot of uh, normal economic uh, activity in China. But from a port perspective, China has not been buying U.S. pork for months. While they've still been shipping pork on a regular basis uh, of previously purchased uh, tonnage, the, the actual new sales has really not been prevalent for a long time. So the, the hog market's uh, selling off and partly on this Chinese focus. But uh, I, I guess I'm not a, a believer that the hog market will continue to, to grind lower. Steve, looking at the grains, last week soy oil and corn made new highs, then traded lower. Soybeans also were lower. Can you speak to the volatility and if there's a new trend developing? Well, the volatility is extreme in the grain markets. Um, first of all, we're seeing a rally on decline in open interest. So it leaves uh, a lot of vacuums in the marketplace and there's not a lot of resting orders above or below the market. Today was probably the first day in which we actually traded weather after the USDA showed uh, corn, soybeans, spring wheat plantings uh, less than average and also reduced the winter wheat crop another three percentage points. So weather markets are very difficult to, to trade. Um, I think that in asking people if 781 July corn, um, if uh, the bean market at 1656, the recent lows was low for the summer. And they said uh, 
they really couldn't tell because a lot of it has to do with China. Uh, there was word today that uh, China's done buying old crop U.S. soybeans and they're done buying U.S. corn. Um, and so the other thing is weather. Our weather guys sees dry pattern in the southern plains extending this summer into the western corn belt. So I think that um, I took a survey today of uh, some analysts and asked them in the month of June and July uh, with uh, 40 days of trading, how many would they see limit up or limit down? The average guess was 16. Steve, maybe you could talk about price in implications of three things. Number one, the China COVID lockdown. Number two, the Ukraine war. And thirdly, the U.S. and Brazilian weather. I think that the war in Ukraine suggests that nearby corn futures are under value because uh, right now the Russians uh, look like they're going to try to take over the southern Ukraine ports and they continue to uh, shell the Odessa uh, port. And so no corn is getting shipped out of uh, Ukraine or no soybean sun oil is. There is some wheat coming out of Russia, but the concern there is getting a vessel, getting an insurance for that vessel uh, during the sanctions, the possibility of increased sanctions. So I think that corn is probably undervalued because of the Ukraine war and soybean oil um, at 82 cents a pound is also undervalued with sun oil and rapeseed oil trading at 100 cents a pound. Um, I think that as far as the uh, Chinese situation, again, earlier said that they're probably done buying beans and uh, corn from the United States. Um, I think that their margins are down. Um, China, uh, in general, their jet fuel, their gas, and their diesel fuel use is down 20%. Um, uh, sorry about that, uh, down 20%. And in the uh, Shanghai area, uh, fuel, uh, gas fuel is down 40%. Finally, Steve, do you think farmers should increase cash sales on this break or the recent, on any, any break? And what should the end users be doing? Farmers have stopped selling uh, grain. Um, right now, the only resting orders they have for new crop is at $8 uh, on the futures, and for soybeans, it's $16. Farmers have sold somewhere between 25 and 30 percent of the new crop grain already, uh, and that's higher than normal. So they sold those values lower than what we are right now. So they're going to wait to see once they get the crop planted and the conditions as far as weather is concerned or where prices are before uh, they in. Uh, increase any new cash sales. They're pretty much sold out of old crop corn and soybeans. Um, as far as end users are concerned, on the flower side, uh, if we don't have a hard red winter wheat crop, people are suggesting that bakers buy any break in the futures and lock in the bases. Uh, if, uh, for instance, we have a lower HRW crop, uh, the basis is going to rally pretty significantly. And the bakers are also dealing with some railroad problems. Uh, with getting trains moved and getting uh, cars uh, at different locations. Uh, from a soybean meal standpoint, we're in a trading range. I think we're at the lower end of the range. Meal uh, users would probably add to coverage if we have bad weather this year. And definitely in corn, <clears throat> whether it's old crop, new crop, even some 2023 uh, people are starting to uh, buy corn and appear that when we look at where the big open interest in calls is, it's $9 in corn, $21 in beans, and around the $13.50 to $14 area in Chicago wheat. Dennis, one more question. I'm hearing some talk about a new bird flu. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's getting a little bit of news coverage. What impact, if this continues to be an issue, will that have on the other meats, meaning, you know, uh, lean hogs and cattle. I'm sorry. What what was the issue, Kurt? The, the, there's a bird flu right now. Okay. That uh, you know is yeah. starting to uh, be heard about in the news, and I'm just curious as to the effect it may have on the livestock markets. You bet. It's uh, it's certainly elevated uh, poultry prices, turkey prices, uh, chicken prices, chicken breast prices. 
even dark meat is now being lifted. It, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, the prices are lifted. That's supportive, especially to the pork market. I think you would consider, a, you know, a, a pork uh, the the comp competitor with with rising poultry prices. Uh, but the other aspect of this is as we uh, see uh, exports shut down, uh, if exports continue to be shut down, eventually it will provide more uh, poultry to the U.S. customer, and then possibly we could see prices reverse and start moving lower. We've not reached that point just yet. So right now it's a supportive factor, to especially to the pork market. Thank you both. Remember, the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services, Archer Financial Services, or ADM. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.